Okay, I recently moved my gaming computer into the Encase M2. It's incredible quality. It is upper echelon of PC cases. If cases are cars, it's a Bentley. If cases are Pokemon, it's a Charizard. Fight me. If they're deadly movie characters, it's John Wick. You can just feel and hear the quality when building it. I do want to quickly mention though, with the black version, it's almost impossible to get rid of fingerprints completely off of the front panel. Now, it's not the smallest SFF case, bigger than the T1, smaller than the A3. But as a SFF case, it does accept micro ATX boards, making it one hell of a flexible case. That's what I went with in this build as I had an ASRock RS Pro lying around that wants to be used. And it's nice to go with micro ATX because I got to avoid the ITX tax that comes with buying an ITX board. I really enjoyed the build process. Instead of just installing components into a case with the Encase M2, you build the case as you're building the PC. You build it kind of around your components. This was really highlighted when installing the GPU. Because my graphics card is so long, the XFX Speedster 7900 XTX at 357 millimeters, I had to install the card without the rear of the case assembled yet. It never would have fit if I assembled the case first or if the end case shipped with the case already assembled. And honestly, assembling the case from scratch and the configuration you want is really rewarding. It really provides to the overall small form factor build experience. And since we're talking about the GPU right now, I want to talk about something I'd do a little different if I was to do this build again. I'd go with an SFX PSU instead of an SFX L PSU. Going with a non-L version would have given me more room for bending cables. With my Corsair's SFX L, my cables put pressure on the video card, pushing it down and making the GPU sag worse than it already was. There is no way I'd go with a regular ATX size PSU with this video card. I don't think it would have fit. If I went with a much shorter video card, an ATX PSU would have been no problem as all the cables would have had room in the front of the video card. And while we're on GPU sag, I added this little DIY anti-sag thing made from these little risers from a TV wall mount that I had. This is just some mounting hardware. The sag was pretty saggy otherwise. This helped. When it comes to CPU and CPU cooler and thermals, some configurations of this case allow liquid cooling. I wanted to keep things simple, so I went with the Noctua NH-D12L cooler to cool my 7800X3D. This cooler doesn't fit in all small form factor cases, and since the 7800X3D does produce enough heat that warrants a bit more of a beefier CPU cooler compared to a lower profile cooler, I'm quite impressed that this cooler fits in the M2. And I mean it just fits. The side panel does make contact with the Noctua, so anything taller than the Noctua D12L's 145mm length won't fit. And in terms of cooling, my 7800X3D got up to 70 degrees while playing Cyberpunk. I added this 92mm fan up at the top to exhaust hot air from the case, otherwise it kind of built up in that area. I didn't show it in the video, but I did switch the Noctua fan around so it's pulling air from the rear of the case and out towards the front of the case and up through the top exhaust fan. While we're on thermals, we have to talk about the GPU. This XFX runs hot, holy moly. And the fans are pretty loud on it. Once the fans get to about 60% speed, I started really getting annoyed. Since I like to game listening to speakers and not headphones, I prefer a quieter system. I added these Arctic Slim 120s at the bottom for intake to help offload the GPU fans. With these things running at about 80%, they're much quieter than the GPU fans at about 50%. I can get good cooling and keep the GPU fans at 40%. In Cyberpunk at 4K 120Hz, I was getting 65 degrees on the GPU. Alright, getting back to the build. To start, I installed my power supply in the regular orientation rather than side mounting it. I did this because I'm using a micro ATX board and I don't want the PSU right up against the motherboard. I like to have some space in between the power supply and the motherboard just for a place for cables to be. If I was using an ITX board, sideways PSU mounting makes more sense. And that's what really fascinates me about the M2. You get to play around with all the different configurations to see what works best for you depending on thermals and or aesthetics and the components you use. Once the power supply was mounted, it was time to line up the motherboard standoffs for a micro ATX board. I realized that the case out of the box was set up to be built in the inverted configuration. In order to swap it to the traditional orientation, I just had to swap this little bracket to the other side on the front panel. Okay, let's get this motherboard prepped quickly and fasten it to the tray. I already mentioned the 7800X3D. This RAM is some lower profile G-Skill DDR5 sticks. 
And it's very important the RAM you choose if you're using this case. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you why. But first, let's just continue with the build here. Let's get this front panel installed to what we have already assembled. A nice thing about assembling this case is that all the screws are pretty much universal. They're all pretty much interchangeable. There's a couple that are unique and the instructions on the end case website are pretty good. And they got some good YouTube videos on how to assemble it. If I went with RAM with larger heatsinks, I probably would have ran into clearance issues when putting the top exhaust fan up top. So keep that in mind when choosing your RAM if you plan on putting any fans up at the top. I started doing my cable management as I went along. This proved to be very beneficial and actually quite easy because once the system is all built, I wouldn't have had much room to properly run cables. I did run the 8-pin CPU power cable behind the motherboard tray as it wasn't long enough to go around the perimeter of the board. Cable management is actually pretty simple when building in this case. Next up is the GPU. It had to be installed before assembling the rear panel or I never would have been able to maneuver it in. I was a bit sketched out by this as I was relying on the PCI slot to hold this behemoth up. It was a tight fit, managing all the power supply cables with such a long GPU. Custom cables would have really been nice here. Then once the back panel was assembled, I could properly mount the GPU to the chassis. While doing this, I scuffed the paint job on the case, so make sure to have a skinny screwdriver that isn't going to rub against the case as you're tightening the screws to hold the GPU in place talk about an epic fail. Cable management in this build is actually pretty easy. I made it harder on myself by not using an SFX power supply and by using one of the longest video cards out there. I still think I managed to do a pretty good job though with the cables. It might not be the most pleasing to look at but there isn't any issues with airflow and I'm happy with it. Now a few thoughts on this case, obviously the biggest selling point to me is the compatibility of large GPUs. I was sold when I realized the XFX 7900 XTX would fit. This case couldn't have come at a better time for me. This case does do a good job with airflow and cooling. I was going to play around with a few of the case configurations to see what's better for thermals, but everything is pretty tight in here and I don't want to mess around with it. It's staying like this. And I do like how my GPU is the right way up compared to upside down if I went with the inverted configuration. I was thinking of purchasing a side panel window for this, but the perforated side panels allow for a lot of airflow, so I'll keep it this way. Overall, I really enjoyed this build, and it will house my personal gaming computer for the next while. I'll likely be upgrading to a 9800X 3D, or if Intel's new chips are good, I'll swap out the platform completely. And maybe this time I'll get some custom cables to make it look really sweet. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.